there. I'm Tiffany Youngren, host of Next Up Nation, where we help podcasters and YouTubers with vision become preeminent thought leaders in their business, in their industries. You are about to have the incredible opportunity to listen as we dig into the why, who, and what of a podcaster show. Then at the end, we'll identify one powerful how, one action that he can take for results in the next 30 days. Let's welcome today, Richard Wilmore, host of the Richard Wilmore Show. Richard, welcome. Well, thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks so much for being here. Richard, the Richard Wilmore Show has released 140 episodes from August 29th of 2016 until the day of this recording, which is August 18th, 2021, which is awesome. Talk about longevity. That's amazing. Uh, so Richard is son, a brother, an ex-husband, a talk show host, and a coffee snob. My kind of person, coffee snobs are my favorite. So really? Richard, yeah. We what? used to have a coffee shop. So <laughs> Oh, I'm so jealous. That's always been a goal of mine. <laughs> or to have a coffee shop name a drink after me. That's a goal. Oh, you know, that can totally happen. No. Well, so tell me, Rich, why did you start your show? Mm. I wanted to create a space that the Rosie O'Donnell show did for me in the 90s. It was like a safe, fun, laugh, an hour of laughter where it didn't matter. It was sort of like where all the misfits went to, right? Like, and all the theater kids and all, they were playing games and everyone from the audience to the guests were having fun. And I needed that at the time. And I thought, I saw one episode and I thought I wanted, that's what I'm supposed to do. And up until that moment, I wanted to be an elementary school teacher. And Aww. the moment I saw her show, I thought that's what I need to do to create a space where people can come and have fun and feel safe and feel heard and, and loved. Is that still your vision? Yes. Yeah. A lot of people, yeah. it took me a long time to start going on shows like yours because I always thought my show isn't about me. It's about the people that I want you to meet. But then I realized, oh, I watched the Rosie O'Donnell show for Rosie, not for Tom Cruise. So I guess I have to start talking to people about me. <laughs> you know what? That is such a good point. I love that uh, because, you know, obviously Rosie had a lot of very amazing guests, but uh, ultimately, I mean, you could watch most of those people on anybody's show. Any show. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So just that environment that's created makes such a big difference. So, yeah. and I have to say as one thing that doesn't come up a lot in my life is the fact that I was a drama kid. Like I was listening to mm -hmm. one of your episodes and I was just, you and your co-hosts were talking about how, you know, walking away from that whole theater scene and things like that is, uh, it's just, it's so weird. And sometimes we don't press into that. We just do it. It's done. But then if we see it, if we get a glimpse back into it, it's almost like there's a part of us that sparks and comes back to life. Is that, does that reflect what, how you're describing your vision for your show? Yeah, I was, a. Uh 10 year old or a 12 year old who saw the show and thought, well, I'll just be famous and then I'll get a talk show. And in my brain, I didn't have access to theater. And that was my, that was my first, um, my first invitation to it. And then I thought, all right, well, I'll just go to college and become a, I was a theater major and then I'll be famous. That'll be very easy. I come from a very small town in Northern Wisconsin, where apparently that's what you think can happen. Um, and it turns out it's very hard to do that, but that's sort of where it, it all came from. I just, uh, needed a space to feel like I belonged. And mm. I felt like if I needed that other people needed it too. I love it. That's so great. Well, let's talk a little bit about the why, who, and what of your show. So we just talked about why you started it, your vision for it, how you see it playing out and what you see it, um, giving back to people. So why do you think it's important? Like why, why was it important for you as a kid to have that type of show in your life? And why do you think it's important for your audience to have your show? I was, I was the kid who grew up who needed laughter. Um, I grew up, my dad got really sick when I was in second grade. My mom got sick and my dad was sick almost my entire childhood. So there was a lot of hospital visits and there was a lot of living with grandparents and I needed sort of an escape. 
which is what the arts do for people. They, you know, it's, it's a complete escape. And now as an adult, I realized that's what it was. Her show was just art, really. All the, all the arts, music, you know, uh, movies, theater, all of that. And it was just a way for me for an hour to not think about everything else that's going on in the world. And that's still kind of true. And I feel like that's what my show is, just an hour of, of craziness, <laughs> kind of, <laughs> you know? Well, and I have to say to anyone who's listening right now, if you're just listening and not watching, I highly recommend that you either go to social media or on YouTube to check out this uh, video or get a visual because Rich, your back background <laughs> is incredible. I love it. That's what I saw when I was looking at your show as well. I, it just feels fun before you even hear you say a word. So yeah, I we're, that. we're well, that, and that started from the opening of the show. Like I wanted it from beginning to end. Um, and this is actually a new studio that we're building right now. Uh, the fifth season starts uh, in September, and we're doing in person again and live performances and audience members. And so this is the a very large space um, that doesn't seem like it right here in this camera, but it's a huge space that we're moving into right now. So I'm very excited to set the entire thing up and really have some fun. I love it. That's, that is so exciting. So I know you, when I was looking at your website and and finding your show (laughs) so that I could listen to it or watch it, are you, um, not only on, you're only on video really, except for, I think you have one episode being interviewed. Are you on podcast platforms as well? We are. I just signed a deal with KP media TV. So we are now on Apple TV, Roku, and Amazon Fire, but they also turn it in to a podcast on iTunes and Google Podcasts. Okay. Okay. So this next season will be available across the yes. podcast platforms. Perfect. Correct. Awesome. Yeah. awesome. Very exciting. Very good. And uh, so when you are, okay, I'm skipping my head. I'm so curious about this. I have to say uh, beforehand too, I was, I was telling, I was telling you that even just getting into the show, it was all I could do not to just ask you a hundred questions. So I'm going to have to just try to dial myself back a little bit. Let's talk about the who, who is your ideal audience? You know, I thought it would be the people that I usually hang out with, which are like middle-aged women (laughs) there. I'm in my thirties and all my, like a lot of my friends are in their fifties and sixties and late forties. So I thought that was it because that was sort of the demographic of the daytime show. But it turns out that I'm finding that a lot of my audience is, is male. Hmm. Um, but I think it's it's the theater kids and it's the comics and it's just the fun people who who uh, want a little party in the middle of the day. Awesome, awesome. And so, what what problem is what problem are you solving for them? So, as you're imagining your ideal person who is sitting there listening, watching your show what problem are you solving for them and what transformation do you see them experiencing over time? I'm hoping I give people access to the arts that they would not normally have access to. The arts have literally saved my life. Um, And so I'm hoping that the people watching, because I don't have, you know, Tom Cruise isn't coming on my show. So I have what I call basement artists as guests. So I started my show in a basement. And so I, but there are great people out there making amazing movies and writing great books and releasing beautiful music, but they can't go on the Today Show or Jimmy Fallon and talk about it. So that's really what my show is for. So I hope they discover and meet someone that they never would have met otherwise. Awesome. So, and how do you measure whether you're expanding your audience? Because I know we're going to be focusing a lot on profit and how to optimize that opportunity, but it's tough to optimize profit without the audience. So how can you, how can you, how do you know more people are tuning in? Are you seeing other types of engagement? So when I first started my show, it was every fi- I would upload it to YouTube and I would put the YouTube link on Facebook and then I would just sit there and watch to see if anybody was watching. Every five minutes I was checking YouTube to see. And then I realized 
at that time, it didn't matter. Those who, those to me who needed to find it would find it. And no matter what, if five people are watching or 5 million people are watching, I have to put out the best product I can. So every show I try to improve something on and I just try to put out the best I can. Um, now figuring out different like algorithms with Facebook, I can watch the views. And that, that's always really fascinating to me. I'm just going back because it's the summer vacation. So we're kind of doing a best of the last four seasons. And so I'm looking at who's watching what episodes and just to see the numbers from the first time, because I do the show live. So to see who's watching then compared to who's finding it two weeks later or two years later, it's really, I'm kind of shocked at some of the numbers that I'm seeing. I also just, um, like I said, started on uh, KP Media TV. So we'll be on all of those digital platforms. So that'll, you know, to me, that's obviously expanding your reach. And so it'll be interesting to see the numbers that come out of that. I don't have those yet because we haven't started. Got it. Got it. Well, and I think it's, I, I love how you're doing this where you have very similar to television programming types of seasons. So you've got your, it sounds like you have your season and you take the summer off and then you come back in the fall and I, you know, it's predictable. I think a lot of us, a lot of times you'll see podcasters and they just feel like they do it until they just run out of steam (laughs) and then they're like, okay, I'm done. And, And then they come back. But I love how you've been able to, in a sustainable way, I mean, since 2016, you've been able to, you know, stick to it. And I Mm -hmm. think that probably has a lot to do with it. Would you say? Yeah, I, I do kind of do the thing where I I know that at a certain point I am going to get tired because it's a lot of work to put on a show um, and to do all of it. So I do kind of, I schedule it out, but I kind of know when my breaking point is going to be where it's going to be too much work. And then I don't want it to become, oh, I have to go interview this person. Like I still want to make sure I'm having fun. So when I stop, I know also that in a couple months, I'm going to start getting the itch of, I need to do this. I'm I, where, you know, where are my people? Um, which happened during COVID. We stopped during COVID because no one was doing anything. And so I stopped my show and then it was like four months in, I was like, all right, can this be over now? Because I need to talk to people. Um, <laughs> so they're finally starting to release stuff and to open theaters. So I'm excited to get back. It's been a long time. Definitely. Definitely. And the other, I was going to ask you too. So up until now, has, has your platform primarily been YouTube then up until was, this next should, season? Yes. It was Facebook live and YouTube. Live. Okay. And YouTube live. And then the, the replays being available continually on YouTube then. Correct. Okay, perfect. One thing I really like too, um, and we are moving into this area of what, like what you're doing already that's working and um, in your methods and things like that. So with this new, uh, you know, this new KP Media TV that you're going to be launching on in this next season, um, one thing I really like about how you do things is your brand. Anything I looked at, it, I could see it. Like I could see your background right now. It's got the same look as your media kit, as it, you know, anything I looked at your website, everything is very playful and fun. It screams theater. You know, it's, it's, I mean, it screams carnival. <laughs> it's, it's really awesome. Yeah, it's like a circus here. Very yeah. theatrical that way. Um, so I really, really enjoyed that. And that's got to help, um, with, Number one, your audience, because they're going to be recognizing it. But number two, is you're looking for sponsors, that was one of the things you said ahead of time that you're the route that you're kind of looking at when it comes to monetization are, you know, looking at sponsorships and advertisers and things like that. So with that, is your new, this uh, KP media TV, do they help you get sponsorships or is this something that you do independently? Um, both. They um, actually just brought on a company to help with that, but it hasn't started yet. Okay. To help recruit and sponsors. sell and things like yeah. that. Yeah. So do you have any sponsors currently? 
Um, so I, I have always had sponsors in where people will give me stuff to give away. <laughs> like there's always stuff coming in to be like, here, give us like, here's our product, give it to people. Um, but I don't have like a, here's a check and run a commercial for me. Okay. Okay. Which, I mean, I feel like that's where, you know, that's the platform. I have a great platform for that. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, and let me just see, I, I like you, you can, if, if you're watching this, you see me, I'm like frantically looking around <laughs> at the different things. Cause you have, you have some really good materials. Um, you know, I know your sponsor info, you've got different levels and things like that. Have you gotten, have you gotten this out in the hands of potential sponsors yet? So this is really where I lack a lot of things <laughs> is going out and, and pitching myself to businesses, which is, was great why KP Media brought someone on because that sort of takes it off of me. It's also time um, that I don't have a ton of time to go door to door asking or making phone calls. So I have done it, but I'm not great at it if I'm being honest. Well, you're creative. So, you know, yeah, that of... <laughs> just seems so boring to me. <laughs> like, it's, it, it's really a good idea to have somebody help with that for sure. But, um, and I mean, so do you, so do you have a strategy at this point or are, are you looking to KP media TV? Are they, are they saying, Hey, we're going to come in, we're going to bring strategy or are you like, this is square one. I have this really beautiful media kit and now I'm, give me some ideas. On how to I feel like I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm definitely at, I feel like square one. Cause I okay. also want to take some charge in it and I want I want to be able, I'm a person who like wants to know how to do everything. So in case something falls through, I can jump in and do it. So, um, I put the media kit together because I knew that I needed that in order to go out and then sell the ads and then that's sort of where it stopped. Okay. 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 And let's see. Um, and I'm going to just say, I've listened to your other show more than I've listened. So you have another show and it's, um, so why don't you tell us the name, the title of that, that show as well. I work for uh, an arts and health nonprofit called Hearts Need Art Creative Support for Patients and Caregivers. And I started a podcast for them called Arts for the Health of It, where we talk to artists, researchers, medical staff, and then people in the arts and also patients from around the world about the benefits to your health that the arts bring. Okay. Okay. Excellent. So I did listen to a lot of those. Honestly, when I went to your website and then tried to kind of track down, where do I find the show? Uh, I kept running into like, where did it go? <laughs> like, okay. And I don't know. Um, so I'm, so can you just kind of run down a little bit of the format for me? Uh, Cause I know the other show really well now. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> do a bunch of it and, and it was delightful. Um, but can you just, just give us an overview of the format of the Richard Wilmore show? Sure. So last season was all virtuals. And so what we didn't have an audience and, um, all of my interviews were done, you know, in different States and different cities. So what I started to do was I have an audience member, usually in person, do the opening and out. So the first person on screen is an audience member and they're introducing the show. Who's on the show, introducing me, they're, they're throwing to the video at the beginning. Um, during the virtual season, I invited a nonprofit on the show every time and a nonprofit would come on, talk about their mission, introduce the show. Uh, and then that would, segue into kind of like a host chat where I would talk to um, when I was in person I would have a house band so I would talk to the house band about what we had done you know previously the week before the night before talk about any sponsors we had whatever was going on in life and then it was just like eight to 12 minute segments of guests where awesome. we would play games and then there's usually music live music at some point Love it. So yeah. do you mind if I just play a little bit of it right now? Because when I'm on my full computer, it's like, okay, 
Why couldn't I find this on my phone? I don't know. But now I'm on my computer. I'm like, I'm seeing everything. So pick I a good feel- episode though. It's not all are great, but pick a good one. Okay. So what season would be typical of how you envision moving into season five? Oh gosh. Um, it's kind of a combination of everything. So I started out my show thinking I just wanted to host a show. I never thought about editing and I never thought about lighting and I never thought about microphones. So there are like pieces of every season that I'm like, that's what I want to make sure in season five that I'm doing. I, so I like, specifically want to listen to the opener. What oh, yeah, go for is, it. is uh, any, is season four a good example of the opener yes. or will it change? Okay. So Lion Throne, Irvin, is that a good sure. one? Yeah, okay. Why not? So, okay. I'm going to go ahead and share this screen and let everyone hear. Hopefully the audio, if the audio doesn't come through, we will make sure that we make that happen. Let's see. I actually don't usually do this, but I was so frustrated that I <laughs> couldn't find if, I, I don't know what was wrong with me today, but okay. So So you can't hear it just so you know. Oh, you can't hear it? Okay. Yeah, there's like a button on Zoom you have to press. Okay. Okay, very good. Let me just grab it. I think I exactly know what to do here. And I changed the intro halfway through season four. And the newer episodes have a better intro. If we're talking visually, it's the same song, but visually it's better. Okay, okay. Let me just see here. Let's see if this works. Can you hear it? Um, no? A little, not great. Okay, <laughs> okay I'm going to do this. <laughs> okay, so I'm just I'm just going to selfishly take a minute here. Okay. okay, this is this actually gives me a good idea of exactly what I wanted to ask you. I had a specific question, but I felt like I really needed to take a look at it. Okay. Okay, So when you start introducing the beginning, uh, I looked at your packages for sponsorships. So when you start introducing those sponsorships, I saw that there are intro announcements for the sponsors. Mm -hmm. How do you envision incorporating that into your show? Cause I love your, I love the beginning of your show so much, by the way. (laughs) So that would be like someone from target coming and saying, hey, my name's Tiffany. I'm from Target. And welcome to the Richard Wilmore show. On today's guest, on today's show, she does the guests and then it throws to that video. And then when the video comes back to her, that person, she introduces me. I come out of a curtain and we have a three minute conversation about why they're there. Uh, if it's a sponsor, obviously, then it's like talking about the business. Maybe they have a giveaway for everybody in the audience, something like that. Okay. Okay. Awesome. I I love that you've got a plan to incorporate it into, so it's not going to take away from the listener experience um, because you already have such a great intro. I'd hate to, uh, I'm always so protective when we're starting to talk about sponsorships and advertisements. Uh, So often I see, uh, and that's honestly, that's one of the things I heard from the other the, the audio versions that I was listening to was the anchor. I think that there was one that was with anchor that I listened to, but, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I just, that first 30 seconds is so valuable yeah. when it comes to that. So I, I love your plan, uh, and what you want to do with that. So, and then, um, one of the things I always ask about is like your visual brand identity, which I think you're just you're so strong at that. I, like I said, I love your visual. And now that I've seen your actual show, the one that we're talking about right now, I'm even more impressed. So, uh, the end of season last season is better. I, I found a new like background. I found some new graphics. I made a whole new like beginning package. And so I'm, I really love how like the 2021 shows turned out. I figured out cameras and microphones and I'm creative. I'm not like techie. So that's my problem. So looking at who your target audience is, what, what companies or what, yeah, what companies would you, have you thought of any that share that same target audience that, um, because to me, that's always the first place that I go to is like, who has a similar target audience that we're in 
you know, different industries. So it's not like we're competing for the same group of people, but instead we'd been enhancing it. I mean, I think Target is a great example, quite honestly. (laughs) Right. So, and I want to keep it, you know, kind of true to me also, because it's sort of branding of me. So I'm a vegan. So I think vegan, I've had vegan, um, like food trucks as sponsors. I think I, we have a lot of, I have pets, so pet products. I love entertainment. So I've had theaters as sponsors. I've had, I'm trying to think of like the different types of sponsors I've already had, but they're like everything that I love and already do. My show is completely, I bring people on that I would go see in concert or I would go see their play anyway. So I think those are the types of things. And then, you know, Target coffee. We talked about coffee beforehand. I drink right. coffee all the time. I, all of my guests get a Richard Wilmore show coffee mug. Oh, so I love it. Fill those with, you know, Seattle's best or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely. And um, I know I'm just looking at your sponsor page right now. If there's like a logo on the coffee mug <laughs> option, but there is. Oh, yeah, that would be. Oh, sorry. I thought you meant like my logo. Um, oh, no, no, no. Really that. Yeah, sure. Yeah, because. Yeah, there you go. Um, Because anytime you can get them on swag, I feel like that sticks with people pretty well. So um, let me just write that down. So also, if you were to look at how you've brought in viewers up till now, what would you say have been like one or two of the most effective ways that you've attracted viewers? Viewers. Um, Because it's... That's a really good question. I feel like it relies a lot on the guest to then go and promote it to their audiences. And then obviously I do it to mine, um, but I do, you know, if a guest comes on and never shares the show, you know, people do that all the time. I don't understand that. But the people who are putting it in their newsletters and putting it on all of their social media and their websites, that's, you know, where the people come and then oftentimes they'll stay. They're like, so, oh, that was fun. <laughs> so how do you communicate with your guests? Like how, have you seen a pattern as far as who shares more often or who doesn't? I mean, you, you communicated one thing that I hear a lot from podcasters, which is when they have guests and they don't share it, how frustrating that is, mm-hmm. but have you seen a difference between who does share it and who doesn't some kind of pattern? I have not seen a pattern that I am aware of. I'm trying to think. Or are there ways that you've helped them share it? Or do you have, do you formally ask them to share it? What's your process? Um, I will like during the or after the interview, I will, you know, tell them hopefully that they'll share it um, because it's live. So it's hard to do it while they're talking to me if we're on social media. Um, But it's usually, it's usually only that when I'm done, I'm like, Hey, make sure you share it. Okay. Bye. (laughs) <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, and then do you have any follow-up as in, you know, emails where you're asking for referrals or any communication that you do after the show with them? Mm, I don't, I usually send them a thank you, but nothing really outside of that. Okay. Okay. Uh, and let's see, do you have a blog? Let's see. I didn't see one on your, okay. So no. Okay. Um, cause I do, I'm, I've got your website open right now and the episode tab doesn't click. There must, I don't think there's an episodes page or is there, oh, there are four seasons of episode pages. So I hope so. Let me yeah. Go. That'll be a note. For might want to check that out. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, the, about the show, I can click on that. Um, make your day richer. That's not clicking. And then about rich. So Oh, shop. I didn't even look at the shop page. Um, so no blog. Okay. And then do you have a formal social media strategy? Hmm, formal, huh? Uh, <laughs> that's a, that's an interesting word. Uh, I don't think it's very formal. It's usually, Oh, something fun happened. Let me post that I'm at a theater or this is who's on the show this week. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. You know, I'm asking you all these questions. I almost feel guilty for asking you because I feel like 
you know, I'm, you know, some kind of asking these hard questions, but I love that your show is so good. Usually I come on and people have great shows, but yours is so different and entertaining and awesome. And so I, I have such a feeling of, I really want, like everybody should be listening to, I mean, I am definitely after this. I promise you, this is the first time I've ever felt like, um, I don't think I really have a good sense of this, even though I did my homework, but, um, after this, I promise I'm going to watch an entire episode. <laughs> if okay, Let me get so, that episodes tab working first, and then you can find, I'll send you a good one. Okay. So immediately after this show, send me a good one and I will post it in our show notes too, so that everybody's got a link to your favorite episode. And so they can be listening to it too and and watching it Um, because I love it. I really like it. And so even though I'm asking you all these questions about promotion and, 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 you know, leading up to the monetization, you have something that there's no reason that you can't do that. And um, even feeling like, Oh, like I hate sales too. I, it's just, I, I just have such a hard time with going out and, you know, attracting people. You, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But the thing is, is using your podcast to do it is effective. And so for, like for myself, I don't, I don't do sales calls. Like I don't like to pitch, but if I have a conversation with someone and it makes sense that we're both like, Oh my gosh, but what do you do? Cause I want to, like, I want to do more. What happens after this? then that's an easy conversation to have, you know, and I feel like I'm doing them a disservice by going, excuse me, this is not a sales call, (laughs) you know? And so, so I'm, when I'm asking all these questions, I'm really leading up to that. Like, how can you do it in a way that's natural for you and where it makes sense as a good next step for your listeners to be provided this sponsorship information, (laughs) you know, so that it enhances their experience versus competes with, how good the show already is, you know? And, um, okay. So I'm about ready to launch into the next phase. So I need to just give myself a, a second and I will, I will get to that here in just a second. Have you joined any online groups or forums like on Facebook or any other social media that's created for your ideal viewers and listeners? So like I, a group of middle-aged women who like, who are vegans. When I show up, I'm like, hey. <laughs> um, I, I am parts of groups either that are are for podcasters or you know people with shows like mine to kind of learn from them. I am also in a lot of like entertainment groups or acting groups, theater groups, and then that's where I will also post my show. Okay, so the people in the theater groups are they your ideal listener or are they like your ideal guest? Would you say or both? Hmm. Um, I would probably say kind of both. I want them on my show, but I also, I was kind of that person, like I go back to like what I wanted it for. And I was that like artsy creative kid who had, who just wanted to like ingest all of the art I could. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. But also theater kids probably don't have a lot of money to spend (laughs) on the advertisers that I'm looking for. So maybe they're not. Yeah. Well, and if you think too, part of your vision, as I heard it, maybe it, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but you're also trying to bring it to people who don't have exposure to the arts. Yes. And so the theater kids usually get exposure to yeah. the yeah. arts. Yeah. So, um, so I think that's great. I love that you're out beyond just the podcasting groups because, while you might accidentally bump into your target audience there, it's not exactly your like full on target audience. So, um, so, okay, perfect. And so, okay. And then too, when you're on social media and you're talking about it and you're talking about your show, what link do you typically send people to? Uh, Just the homepage, richardwilmore.com. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Okay. (laughs) I know I said, okay, like a million times just now, but I'm like typing up my final thing. And (laughs) this is really, so I do these hot seats all the time. It's been far more popular than I ever thought it would be. 
So today what's happening is number one, you are not a business-based podcast. You're not like, hi, I have a business and I would like to promote it using a podcast. And usually that's what, like, that's what we're looking at. <clears throat> Excuse me. So this is actually extremely fun for me and it's okay. making me more distracted. So this is the most, uh, like, uh, okay. Okay. I think I've been on any, <laughs> on any show, but a lot of it just comes from just being super excited that we're talking about something entertaining. Um, <clears throat> I mean, obviously the other ones are entertaining also, but this is so colorful and you know, we're, it's specifically about entertainment, but, um, but also we don't talk a lot about profit. And so I think this is a really good opportunity. And I always tell podcasters to ignore profit is to ignore sustainability. Like that's how you end up getting help. It's how you end up being able to do it for a living and things like that. So I have to ask too, before we transition into the next phase of this interview, uh, what do you do all of this yourself? Do you have a job that supports it? Like, how do you, how do you do what you're doing? Uh, yeah, I do it all myself. I do every piece of this all on my lonesome. Um, and so I have many, cre- all my jobs are creative. I have a ton. I help with other podcasts. I help produce and direct other podcasts. I do graphic design, social media stuff for small businesses. I work for the arts and health nonprofit. I do all kinds of weird, crazy things. Okay. So it's underwritten, underwritten by all those weird and crazy mm-hmm. things that you mm-hmm. get to do on a daily basis. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. So one of the things uh, that you wanted from your show, I had asked you before this interview, what is it that you want from your show? And you said a broader audience. What do you think is standing between you and that right now? Um, I think probably promotion. I kind of do it and then I, I promote it on, you know, my social media and whatever, but I kind of then just like, I start then preparing for the next one. So I don't have a lot of, it's not really out there, which is also why I started doing interviews. I wasn't doing any really promotion of myself or the show. So I think that's where it's been lacking is I, I, I do it and I love it. And this is what I wish I could do every day and get paid for it. Like I love being able to do this. Um, And so that's been a recent like, duh moment for me of like, how do you expect people to know if you don't talk about it? Right. Right. Awesome. Okay. So we've just, I feel like I've gotten a lot of really great information about your show, you know, why you do it, who you're talking to and some things that are working really, really well. I feel like you've got a really established show, which is a huge advantage Before we transition, I'm about to ready to go into the part where I share my take on it. So I talk about what I see that you're doing, some things that I see you doing really strong, uh, some areas of opportunity. And then the one thing that I believe will get you results in the next 30 days. But before I do, is there anything that you haven't shared about your show that you would like me to know about it, that you would like everyone to know about it before we transition into the next phase? One thing that popped in my head Oh, well, you were talking a little bit ago um, about kind of people seeing it and you were like, it gets me excited and I don't understand like what well, everybody should be watching is when I get people on the show, everybody says that same thing. We need a show like this. How come you're not on whatever CBS here in town? Like we don't have shows like this anymore. And I, f- and I don't really know why it's, mm-hmm. it's fun. It's entertaining um so I hear that a lot from my guests oh my gosh that was so much fun we need you we like we're so thankful for you because Mm -hmm. um and we need you and that's always do you do you hear from them afterwards that they're listening to your show or have you checked in with them to say hey do you listen to it what are your thoughts yes and I get messages all the time that say from people who have been on the show like years ago oh my God, your theme song got stuck in my head today. Somehow it popped <laughs> in my head and because I love my theme song. And uh, so I, I do that too, actually. <laughs> yeah, I, it was It was actually my first guest ever wrote and produced the theme song for me. They ended up giving me that song as a gift. Um, and I get a lot of photos with, with the Richard Wilmore show mugs from people. 
Look what I'm love. using today. Love, love it. Yeah. I, I totally agree. I just think what you need to be is a household name because it will make the selling easier. It will make the audience building easier. So, so I'm so glad that you brought that up. I think that that's, I'm excited to hear that people who are on your show are listening afterwards that speaks volumes as well. Mm -hmm. So as I transition into this whole, my take on it, it's actually still a conversation. It's more comfortable for me because it really turns into a conversation (laughs) about your show instead of me just riddling with you with all these questions, because I want to fulfill my promise, right? I want to be able to give you that takeaway at the end. So, but before I do, I always like to talk about the four P's to preeminence and with preeminence comes profit. So number one is to know your purpose, which is why we talked about your why, and you have a really strong purpose. Number two is to know your people and really dial in on your audience messaging. Number three is promotion, optimizing the promotion of your show, and then ultimately earn proceeds or profit to pay for help, to pay for production, to pay for you to be able to do this for a living instead of peace piecemealing everything together like you are and, and being scrappy so that you can be that overnight success in 10 years, in the 10 years that it takes to be an overnight success. <laughs> so, but we're but in year five. So we're halfway it. there. Exactly. You know, and that's not to say that you're an overnight, um, you know, that you can't be successful in the meantime, but you know, that overnight success that everybody's like, Oh my gosh, you're amazing. And you're so successful. And how did you do it? And you're like, no, this is, takes a long time. Yeah. <laughs> so, so my husband, every once in a while, turned to me and like, Hey, you're seven years into your 10 year <laughs> overnight mm-hmm. success journey. I'm like, thanks, bud. Appreciate yeah. it. <laughs> Glad we're counting. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But it, it keeps my eye on the ball. It, it keeps me honest. Like, I, you know, we need what we need in the meantime, and we need to like what we're doing in the meantime and still be profitable but that real win, that big W really takes the 10 years. So, um, awesome. So do those make sense? The four P's, can you see how that all plays into this whole bigger picture? Yeah. So some things, and this isn't all inclusive. These are just things that jumped out at me that I feel like you're really strong at one. I've said a million times your branding. I absolutely love it from your logo to your website, to your media kit, to, if you go to your you know, when I went to the right spot on your YouTube page, <laughs> um, you know, everything just screams the same thing and just makes you want to watch it. It just looks different and fun. And so even, you know, I, I was coached by someone who wrote a best selling uh, book and she always told me, you know, the cover of that book, you want it to look similar enough to look like it belongs on the bookshelf, but different enough to make someone actually grab your book. And so I feel like your your cover art for your, for your, uh, YouTube videos, your thumbnails. I feel like that's the case, you know, it's a show, but yet it looks more fun than the other one. (laughs) So, so excellent job. Also, when I went to your website, the one thing I really liked is now that you're transitioning into sponsorships and looking for ways to monetize in that direction. I, I like that it was easy. You know, um, I would, probably for a user experience, prefer to see a page for the information instead of a download. I always feel violated if I download something, maybe that's just me. I don't know, but I do this a lot and I will download if I feel like, Oh, okay, well, I want to keep this and carry it with me, but I like to get a touch first before I commit. Like, I feel like that's, that's asking me to dinner before I even, yeah, no, that makes sense. <laughs> so that 100% makes sense. Yeah. But I love it. I think your, I think your media uh, kit is just beautiful and clear and it's easy to understand. So it, it really hits on all those things. I like the names that you've given your sponsorship levels and everything. So I think it's really fantastic. Um, also, I love that you have a mug. I think that that's <laughs> super awesome. Um, it's very TV. I'm looking at it right now on your store. And I just think that that's great. Um, and that you encourage like, um, moving in a little bit, I'm going to be kind of going back and forth between opportunity and what you do well now. So whenever I talk about opportunities, we talked about this at the beginning, this isn't like your to-do list. I wouldn't like take all these down and, you know, start doing all of them. I would 
but if there's sometimes there's something that's like, oh, well, we're kind of already doing something like that. That would be super easy just to make this little tiny tweak. So, um, and then, you know, later down the road, maybe implement more things, but, you know, I really think if I were to develop like number one, I do believe you need to develop a social media strategy because you have such a good visual audio. You have amazing guests who are entertaining. Also, um, if, if you're getting it out regularly on social media and tagging them, they're going to share it, you know, again, it's just making it really easy and social, you know, so that it makes sense that everybody's sharing it and looking at it. And, um, especially if you're like going to the theater and it's like, Hey, I'm at the theater. And then, um, but the big thing is too, is the link that you send them to you. I would suggest that anytime, well, first of all, I always suggest having a blog because it makes you searchable on Google. And so if someone's looking for you, I mean, you are on YouTube. In fact, let me just take a look at your descriptions. Um, you know, being on YouTube helps a ton. And so sometimes that can bypass that whole need, but let's see here. So for example, I just looked at, I'm looking at your, your YouTube, um, you know, Google can't read pictures quite yet. Like they can read it if you, you know, put metadata in there, but that's really nerdy. And so there's a much less nerdy way to do it. And that is just to beef up your description and you'll be needing to do that anyway, because you'll be putting your content on podcasts. And so having more words that Google can search for and find is really good. Also having a blog is a big deal because you can control what people do when they find you. So if you have, let's say you have a social media campaign and you're like, I'm interviewing this person and now I want everyone to know it. You want to send them directly to that episode. So whether you're sending them directly to the YouTube page, or if you're sending them directly to that blog post with the YouTube video embedded in it, with the description down below it, and then a call to action, you know? So it's like, Hey, but with a blog, you can control all of that where, and you own it. So if you're like, Hey, sign up here, we're going to give someone a mug every month and mail it to you or something like that, where you're just drumming up that. Cause your show is all about fun and excitement. So anything that you end up, I would just say, you know, putting together a social media strategy would be very beneficial to you. Okay. Just and it doesn't have to be strict. Like you don't have to say, I am going to do two quote. Like I would have to do that. Cause that's my personality. But, but like, even if you just said like every week, um, cause it's a weekly show. True. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. So every week it is all, it's like birthday week for that guest. And so whatever, you know, it could be something not even on the show, but something that you see, or if you're at the theater, you're like, Oh, you know, I just saw this person or I was at the coffee shop and, I think, you know, just whatever it is, um, sending them to that again, either the exact YouTube video or that blog post, because then as a user, I don't want to have to go find it. Like I just yeah. want to arrive. <laughs> mm -hmm. And the cool thing about the blog as well is, is if you can start driving people to your website for the content, then you can start developing a an easy way for sponsors to get involved. So when every time you have a guest say, wow, I love this show and we need more of this. And, you know, I think everybody should know about it. Well, there's a way that they can support that to happen, you know, and, and then you can start developing and testing like how number one, how can listeners get involved with supporting it? Well, I mean, that's easy, but you don't want that to be the first thing you ask them for. You want it to be the third thing. You first want them to watch an episode that they fall in love with. It makes them watch another one. And then it's like, see, we totally need stuff like this. Here's how you can make this be, you know, happen on an ongoing basis and get better and better, just like it already is, you know? And yeah. then as sponsors, as they're getting attracted, you, if you have a developed social media strategy and you've got a blog that is you're controlling and you're, you know, you've got listeners signing up. You, you can say like, I've got this many listeners, you're building an email list. And then you go to a sponsor and you're like, look, you can go and you can sponsor these podcasts that have, you know, 400,000 listeners who don't, who aren't engaged, but this is what my listeners do. So when I tell them on my show that, Hey, I like this guy, this is, this is, 
where I would go because look at him, he's supporting this. And then there's more of a, um, impact, you know, because a lot of times what happens is businesses are constantly asked for money and advertising opportunities. And then it just money just flies out the window and nobody really knows if it works. But if you've got an engaged audience who believe you when you talk and you're telling them to go to the sponsor that has a lot bigger impact. And if the sponsor signs up and then you start seeing results for them, what happens is they're willing to pay more. There's more competition. Like it, it'd be nice in a year to be having a conversation about how do we, you know, um, optimize the competition that's happening for yeah. the few spots that we have on the show. And then also mm. I would, I would suggest just from a sales standpoint, again, I love your, I love your options. I love how clear it is when it comes to sponsors, but fewer choices. Remember we talked about maybe not so many choices mm-hmm. or, you know, a confused mind says no. And so having, so I just said a whole bunch of stuff and usually I breathe in between a lot more often. I want, I want to get your feedback on, on some of the things that, that was just said and, and what are your thoughts and questions and feedback? No, it all makes sense. And it's all, uh, a blog. I just started, I haven't even put it on the website yet, but for the, the nonprofit that I work with, I was like, we need to start a blog for that exact same reason. So in my head, I know all of these things are true. It's implementing them and having the time to like do it, but it's so important. Well, in an easy way to start, because like I said, and, and I talked to you about this before the show too, is I don't really love having like this big, huge, brand new idea. Like, oh, you should start doing this whole new thing that you're not doing already. Here are the things to leverage. Yeah. I do think a blog is really powerful. And I would say that if there was a moment where you could be like, okay, I am going to implement it. An easy way to start is, um, let me see. Do you, do you build on WordPress? I usually have this. Let's see. Uh, no. I okay. hate WordPress. <laughs> okay. The nonprofit oh. website is WordPress. Oh, that I'm hurt me a little bit. That. You okay. love WordPress? I love, uh, I love WordPress. Okay. So, um, what I would say, and I don't know if I know WordPress has a, a plugin and maybe Wix is too, I'm not sure, but if you can get an RSS feed that creates a blog post every time, you release an episode, then that's a good start. And then what you can do is start building onto that so that you can, one one thing, in fact, that I recommend, because a lot of times the RSS feed you've got, you imagine you've got your, your podcast that's released through the RSS. It includes a description, uh, your cover art, you know, everything like that. So you, you've got what you need for a blog post. And then beefing up your description for your RSS feed is a big deal too, including links because those are link backs. So that's going to help your SEO as well. Uh, but then that way it's just on autopilot. And then you can think about it later. Cause you're like, oh yeah, I really need to develop out my blog posts, but going, oh yeah, I really need to develop out my po- blog posts is a lot better than, oh my gosh, I need to start a blog, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So it's, yeah. it's those baby steps. And you know, the more that you put the more that you see it working, the more you're going to want to put time and finances into developing it. Because from there, it's a matter of, you know, I mean, you could be taking transcripts and sending it to a writer when you've got the resources, right? So it's like, you could get maybe someone to sponsor just the blog. And so that's what you do with that is like, Hey, um, you know, maybe there's an acting class or something people could take to, you know, or improv or something like that, where it's like, Hey, here's your next step in creativity. Like you want people coming to your show to be inspired and and exposed to, um, to the arts, you know, what is a way that they can take a next step in the arts? That would be an ideal call to action because, then they get to live it, you know, and, um, but, but have a gate so that they're signing up with your email so that you can send them a list, like maybe put together a list of ways that they can express themselves. You know, you like painting, here's an online course on how to do painting. Here's a free video series that I love. I mean, I've, I'm obsessed with drawing videos. And so, Mm -hmm. you know, sometimes it's just something as, as easy as that, but have a guide that they can sign up for, to take that next step in expressing their own artistic side, or, I mean, there's a lot of improv classes online or, you know, ways that they can watch 
uh, live performances online? Like what, what websites would they go to, to do that? Or, um, and then that way you set it up once and it automatically delivers that guide every time they sign up, but you're building an email list that they want to know what you have going on next kind of, does that make sense? Yeah, it totally makes sense. Okay. And that's, yeah. it's, it sounds hard, but it's actually, you know, it's a matter of an opt-in and a, um, you know, simple Google doc <laughs> that you just type a list of resources and links and then boom, you deliver it to them. Um, although I know you, you'd probably make some really beautiful PDF that would have, would have the links right inside. <laughs> and I think that that would be a lot more on brand. So, um, that could actually be a fun project. Don't you think? Yeah. I, my opening video is a minute and nine seconds long and it took me two days to make. So, you know, I, but yeah. I love doing stuff like that. Okay. Okay. Oh gosh. I love that idea. In fact, I'm ready to sign up for it right now. So, um, and then other areas of opportunity, we mentioned putting spo- a sponsor on your mug. I would make that a much more expensive sponsor, <laughs> you yeah. know, cause that's a big deal. Um, and then the social groups, I would just suggest thinking about the behavior of the people who don't, aren't exposed to the arts and consider mm-hmm. joining those kind of groups. And, um, and then when you're in those and you might already be doing this, but you know, we don't want to be spammy in groups. Obviously we want to build relationships and things, but sometimes there's an episode that really speaks to somebody. And instead of just dropping a link and go, Oh, you should listen to this episode. A lot of times I'll tell them what's in it. I'll be like, Hey, if you know, in, in our, on our podcast, um, I interviewed this person and these are three things that they said that would work. And so I give like all the best tips out of it without them having to leave and go do it. So the more that you're doing things like that, in those kind of groups, um, would be another area of opportunity. That's kind of in line with what you're already doing. It just would be another group. Yeah. Oh, is all this helpful? Yes. It's super helpful. Okay. Good, 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 yes. good, good, good. Cause again, it just, um, and usually what's funny to anybody who's listening to this, who's listened to my other shows, they're probably like, I cannot believe that Tiffany is giving all these ideas on how to have a sponsor. Cause usually I'm anti-sponsors, but I always say as soon as someone comes on and they've got a really entertaining show and they've got a way to in- integrate sponsorships without hurting the content, I'm all over it. And I just think this is a fantastic way to do it. I think again, having someone at the end of the day, okay, I'm just going to give you the one thing. And then I, then we can talk a little bit more about all the things, but if I was the boss of the world and I could just make you do one thing, it would be that blog with a call to action and have someone sponsor it. So they're paying for the blog and then have the blog post written because then you're going to have more people going there and then embed that video at the top of it, because every page is going to turn into a landing page and that, um, and then, um, your sponsor, um, having, you know, developing a way for this to work. So you get the email address, but they know like they're going to your sponsor or you just have your sponsor on that page, but somehow developing that out so that it's the best of both worlds where, and the, the person signing up knows clearly who's getting their information. It's, it's just such a big advantage to you, but also to the sponsor, but also having, having resources to build it out. Cause sometimes that blog post can be a chore and, um, but it's just so powerful. So I just think that, um, that would be amazing. And then again, um, when it comes to like going out, we were talking about being salesy. And one thing I didn't even talk about was this idea of using your show to bring out that conversation of, you know, um, getting sponsors without feeling like you're trying to sell and things like that. I think one area of opportunity, just kind of going back to that might be to develop out a way to communicate with your guests so that they can refer people that they think would be good sponsors, because then you have an introduction. So you're not just like coldly, then you also have a responsibility to them. So I I don't know about you, but that's a kind of pressure that will make me call somebody is if Mm -hmm. somebody gave me their name, I'm like, okay, I'm on the hook for this right now. And so just as far as psychologically tricking ourselves into making that call, because once that, and then you might even get another listener. So, um, so I would say, so it's tied. So if you're like, I don't want to do the blog post, then the other thing I think would be equally that would probably get you the sponsorships quicker directly would be developing out that communication with your, 
with your guests um, after the show. And a lot of times with, you know, we, we have like a sequence in fact, you'll see it right after the show, but so where it's like, um, we, it's really important to me that my guests stay informed. And so if you look at it like that, like, I want them to know the things that they want to know, like, when does my episode come out? Um, what do I do next? Like, are you just done with me? Do you not care about me anymore? <laughs> you know? So all of those, I want all of those things answered. So there's, there's a sequence. It's like, Hey, thank you for being on my show. We're going to be sending you out an email that will give you the release date. As soon as the release date set, it's like, Hey, there's a release date. Here's the release date. And then it releases. And it's like, Hey, your show released today. And then it's like, Hey, we have this folder with some media that you can use to go take out and use it however you want to. But even if all you did was just sent the emails that were like, uh, and in each of those emails, like one has like a, Hey, is there anyone that you would like that, you know, who could benefit from this, who also would be a good fit for us possibly. And that we could, that you could introduce us to, and that might be the space to be asking for, you know, um, you know, I had such a great time on the show with you. Uh, what, um, you know, I know that you mentioned this was something that everybody should know about. And one of the ways to do that is through introductions. Who else do you think would be passionate about that? Who, you know, maybe has a business or maybe, you know, but define who that might be, that would be a yeah. good referral. So helpful. Yes. Do you have any questions? <laughs> I feel like I just, when I get excited, I do that. I just like, I've got all these no, ideas. No, I, I, I can't wait for this episode to come out so I can re-listen to it and be like, all right, here are my notes. I should have had paper and pen for this. No, uh, no. And, I, and I'll send, I'll send you something with a list too, but yeah. <laughs> no, it's, but it's a lot of it is things I know, but I'm like, oh, I don't have time for that. Now. But mm-hmm. I know like you're making it known what the priorities are. So I really need to like refocus and be like, no, that, you know, the focus has to be on taking it to the next level. And I can't do that sitting here by myself every day. And ultimately I think the easiest thing that you could do that would still get your results quickly are sit down and write out the day of the interview email and the day that the release date is set email and the day that it's actually released email and, um, you know, and then just go from there and include like, what is it that you, what is it that you want your guests to know? And then what is it that you want from them? And don't make it very long too, is the other thing, but that would probably be the easiest thing that would get you the most return because getting those, again, those introductions are really powerful. Yeah. Okay. Helpful. And then all the rest of it can just be great ideas. You can make a list, you know, when you listen to it. (laughs) Awesome. Well, gosh, this was, this was just such a delight to get to hear more about your show. And, um, uh, you know, if, 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 uh, you're implementing this and see results, be sure to tell me, cause I'm really excited yes, about your course. show and want to hear more about it. But, um, and then for all of you who are listening to the show, be sure to go check out the Richard Wilmore show right now. It's loaded onto, um, YouTube. Definitely watch the videos. I will be watching the videos and then be watching for season five, which will be out everywhere. And then you can just look it up, um, on your favorite podcasting platform. And of course, uh, richardwilmore.com, which we'll have in the show notes and rich, thanks again so much. Is there anything else that you'd like to add before we wrap? I just want to thank you for having me on. This is you spend a lot of time with each of your guests and really help. It's super helpful. And I feel energized and like, like I actually know a little something more than I did before and that I'm going to like actually be able to do it. It seems so overwhelming when it's just me sitting here thinking of all the stuff, but when you actually break it down the way you do, it's like tangible stuff. So I'm excited to thank you. Oh, that just makes me feel so good. I'm so happy to hear that. I appreciate that. It's funny because, you know, I've had other shows, my hot seat series are the longest episodes for sure. And in the beginning, I'm, I'm, I've always been really strict about my, my episodes need to be 30 to 40 minutes and that's it. But the, the hot seat series, I just threw all my rules out the window, (laughs) except for I have to keep my promises. Those are the only two things. And, um, 
But yeah, so I really appreciate it. I appreciate hearing that because it is a long time and to sit and really hash out your, your show for this long is yeah. it's tiring, I'm sure. And, um, and it's I'm really taking a nap after this. Yeah, yes. <laughs> me too, probably. No, yeah. <laughs> but, um, but ultimately, um, uh, if it can, if it can help you take even just one step, because again, I think there's so many things you're already doing very well that by making tweaks, even it's going to have a huge impact. And then if you're able to find ways to delegate the things that feel bigger, um, the big that, especially the blog, that's, it's going to have such a huge impact, uh, over time. I mean, the thing about blogs is it, it does take time. It's not like, Oh, I started a blog. And then the next day you're like, I hate Tiffany. She's the worst person because this is not working. It just takes time. But ultimately what happens is the ones that start working quicker, you know, you're watching your, your analytics and seeing like which ones get the most searches and then put more resources behind those, or maybe put ads behind them or things like that, because you, you begin to really understand. I think that, I think that the blog posts help me understand people's interests and, mm -hmm. and then looking at their behavior on the pages. Uh, do they look at the next episode or, you know, you're able to kind of really evaluate what they're doing yeah. a lot better than I feel like with podcasts, we're a little bit more limited because we can't really, I mean, we can, but you'd have, it just requires a lot more resources to track it to the level that we can easily track it with websites. So, yeah. so anyway, well, good. Well, thank you again so much for being here. I really appreciate it, Richard. Thank you. Yeah. And then, Hey, for everyone who's listening, don't be average, be brave, take action and make magic happen. Thank you so much for listening.